Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for, for joining us for uh, this afternoon's uh, In Focus talk with Kenny Farkerson. Hello, Kenny. Hello, Malcolm. How are you doing? Yeah, Thanks. we're receiving one another uh, loud and clear here. We only actually met yesterday uh, uh, online, funnily enough, but we have been in communication about, about this uh, special event for a little while now. So a little uh, introduction here, Kenny, if you bear with us here, but this is, a, this is one of a series of images um, that we're undertaking as we approach the end of the, of the Oscar Marzaroli show that's been on here at street level. Uh, in and out of lockdown, I have to say, but uh, tremendous response from the public uh, to the show. So we're ending in a kind of celebratory fashion with this talk today. Uh, Friday night, we'll be showing the Clyde film, which was edited at uh, Ogam Studios, which was Oscar studio. And we'll be talking with Alistair McCallum, one of the filmmakers of that from Cranhill Arts. Uh, next week, we'll be screening, special screening of Dear Green Place, the film that was made by Marzaroli and uh, Mike Pavitt uh, way back in 1968. Alongside Chris Leslie's film, Reimagining Glasgow, which uses a lot of film footage from uh, Marzaroli's film, uh, Glasgow 1980, alongside his own, his own photographs uh, and footage of Glasgow now. We'll culminate uh, on uh, Saturday the 19th with a panel session called Oscar and Me, and uh, we'll be joined by a bunch of people. It's all on our website, and we'll be uh, talking all things uh, Oscar Marzaroli. So uh, the format of this talk is as usual, a little introduction. Kenny will give a presentation, then we'll have a couple of questions uh, at the end, short questions that we'll select that you type into the comments feed on this page that you're looking at now. Questions, comments are welcome as well. If there's lots of questions, we won't be able to cover all of them. We will select one or two. Any technical questions, we might have to block you from our Facebook page, but you can have a go. Um, so anyway, uh, so Kenny is going to present uh, his thoughts uh, and observations on uh, a few of the images by uh, two of the, the pillars of Scottish documentary photography, Joseph McKenzie and Dundee and Oscar Marzaroli uh, in Glasgow. It coincides uniquely enough with exhibitions of both uh, of these photographers' works. Obviously, Joseph McKenzie at the McManus, Dundee's Art Gallery and Museum. And it's on until October of next year, so plenty of time to catch it. Uh, and the Oscar Mazzaroli show that's on at street level here. And that ends uh, a week on Sunday, Sunday uh, the 20th. We had seen the tweet that you did, uh, Kenny, a month or two, a couple of months ago, after you had visited the, uh, the Mackenzie show and you wrote a really nice uh, review of it for the Times. Uh, but you tweeted, you know, who's your favourite Scottish street photographer, Mackenzie or Marzaroli, and that, that was good. I think that was meant to create synergy and raise awareness rather than competition, I think. But we thought at that point, oh, it'd be quite good like, if we could get uh, this guy, you know, to maybe talk a little bit about that, but we didn't know you at the time. It was Jeremy from uh, over at Document Scotland who put us in touch in actual fact, because you were on, uh, you wrote a piece for their blog fairly recently as well. Um, and there was an interview indeed with you on that, which if I can just potentially share my screen. I can potentially show you a bit of that. Maybe I can. No, let's skip that, Kenny. But there is a piece on the Document Scotland yeah. website, <laughs> which is called a home fixture. And it's uh, Kenny talking about one of his passions, which is uh, Dundee United Football Club. But when he goes to see the games, he takes his camera. You've described yourself as a as a fan with a camera, so you're a keen, you're a keen photographer yourself. So um, someone can share the link in if Jeremy's watching. Share that link in the in the comments feed if you don't mind, uh, 
don't mind Jeremy. Uh, so thank you. You're also in a band called uh, Best Picture and you're a drummer as well, which I find particularly uh, good. Uh, drummers and bands is one of my passions, you know, the names of drummers and bands that is, but uh, Best Picture you describe as a dad's band and I think, well, it's a, it's a kind of term that you hear, but it's only when you have to kind of introduce someone uh, as being in one, you think, well, what does that actually really mean? And I looked up and it said it's a collection of middle aged to older guys with day jobs, putting on Hawaiian or flame shirts, playing classic rock at the corner bar on a Friday night. Well, I think you're doing yourself a disservice there because I looked up the single uh, Isabel and uh, I think it's actually very 60s and quite kitschy, not classic <laughs> rock at all. Um, but there's other members of that band that people watching might know. Who who are they, uh, Kenny? Well, um, we've got a, a couple of superstars in the band. We've got a Glasgow superstar. And I see you're wearing there, Malcolm, um, a T-shirt, a Bluebells T-shirt. You know, uh, there we go. They're, 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 they're classic album sisters. Well, Bobby Bluebell from the Bluebells is the rhythm guitarist in, in my band. And... Um, our lead singer is uh, is uh, Ian Rankin, the the novelist. So we've got two superstars in the band. The rest of us are just mere mere journeymen compared to these two giants. Right. Okay. No, that's very good to hear. And you supported Hipsway last Christmas, round about this time. Uh, well, close to this time last December uh, in Glasgow and in Edinburgh. In Glasgow at St Luke's, I was at that gig actually uh, with my daughter. I must have missed the support band because I, I, I can't I can't remember you because I, I would remember so I must have, I must have missed it. But funnily enough, just how everything connects, uh, my my colleague, my work colleague here at Street Level is uh, is the backing singer in Hipsway, Louise. Fantastic. The, yeah. Hipsway are fantastic. They, they are a classic band and they they've still got what it takes. Yeah. And yeah. Graham, the lead singer, has still got all the moves. It's, yeah. He certainly has, Skinner, yes. So, uh, Isabel, it's on YouTube, folks. Look it up. Band's called Best Picture. So, anyway, you, you on Muckrack, you you say that uh, you've been a, a pupper, a pauper, a pirate, a poet, a pawn, and a king. But the official line is that you're a columnist and senior writer with the Times in Scotland. Your career highs include being embedded with the Scottish troops in Afghanistan and reporting on Barack Obama's first presidential election. Um, you've been, you're described as one of Scotland's most experienced political journalists. You were the first convener of the Scottish Parliamentary Journalists Association. And as editor, you ran uh, Scotland on, on Sunday newspaper and was deputy editor of um, The Scotsman. You're a Norwell Fellow. You've been Political Journalist of the Year, Columnist of the Year, and Interviewer of the Year in the Scottish Press Awards. But today, you're going to talk about that other passion of yours, which is other people's photography, and provide us with your insights into the work of uh, Joseph McKenzie and Oscar Marzaroli. So you take it away, uh, Kenny, and I will just share the screen to the PowerPoint. All right, Malcolm, thank you very much for that introduction. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, street Level is a fantastic gallery and it's, it's every time I go to Glasgow, I always make a, a point of, of being there and I can't wait to, to, to we all get back to normal again. Um, yeah, I wrote a piece for the Times a couple of months ago about going to the Joseph McKenzie exhibition at the McManus Gallery in Dundee with my brother. Um, and can I just say, if, you're ever, if you've never been to McManus, you should go. It's a very, uh, it's a fantastic wee gallery. It's very, it's like a mini Kelvin Grove, if you know what I mean. It's very welcoming atmosphere, especially for families. Um, so me and my brother were walking around the Mackenzie exhibition. And as we were doing so, we found we were talking a lot about Oscar Marzaroli because the comparisons were so obvious. Um, a, and so if you find yourself looking at a high contrast you know, monochrome photograph of street life in Scotland in the 1960s, I think you'd be hard pressed to say which of these two men had taken it. Um, and so what I'd like to do in the time we've got today is 
to look at the similarities between Mackenzie and Marzaroli, um, two of Scotland's greatest photographers, and also to flag up some differences of emphasis and the differences of approach. I think they share two big themes primarily. One, one of them is documenting working class life in urban Scotland in the 1960s. And the, um, this, thanks for putting this picture up. This is a Marzaroli picture of women washing clothes in a steamy in Glasgow. And, and like a lot of Marzaroli pictures, it's a time machine, okay? It takes us back to a time that's within living memory, but seems like a different geological age. You know, my mother in Dundee in the 1950s and 1960s used to take clothes to the steamy um, uh, on the hill town in Dundee. She used to pile them up on a big tan sad pram and take them up the hill to the steamy. So when I look at these women, I see my mother, I see my aunties, I see my granny, I see how hard their lives were. But I also see their strength, their resilience, their forbearance as they went about their days. Um, both Mackenzie uh, and Marzaroli set out to capture not just the pathos of poverty, but the vitality of working class life. And you know, this is a picture by Mackenzie of two Dundee Duke workers. And personally, I think this is a, a hugely glamorous picture. And a lot of Mackenzie's pictures of Duke workers in Dundee uh, are hugely glamorous, in my opinion. There's some things like fashion shoots. It's, it's, it was mostly women who worked in the jute mills in Dundee while the men worked in the shipyards and the engineering works. And the mill work, the women's work, was more regular than the engineering work. So the women had more economic security than the men. They had the economic power. The men were often laid off and had, were on, were, you know, because of uh, shortages of, of worker orders or that, but the women's work was regular. And it gave the, um, the women more independence and uh, financial independence, which is the root of independence uh, um, uh, per se. And I think these, the confidence of Dundee Duke women comes through in Mackenzie's pictures, including this one. And to use, uh, <laughs> to use a, a George Galloway phrase, I think both Mackenzie and Marzaroli um, wanted to salute the indefatigability of working class Scots. You know, this isn't poverty porn. You know, they wanted to capture the spark, the humor, the defiance in these lives, even though those lives were often hard lives. And no picture, I think, sums up that spirit that, than this one. It, this the, the Castle Milk Lads. We're, we're very familiar with this picture. This is Marzaroli's picture. It's the main promotional image for the street level exhibition that's on at the moment. So, but if you'd like a new perspective on it, if, if it, you know, it's maybe too familiar sometimes, I'd, I'd recommend you look at a fantastic article by a writer, a friend of mine called Peter Ross, who, and he tracked down these kids as adults. He did it in 2012 and he brought them together to talk about this picture and their memories of the day it was taken. And I just want to read a wee bit from Peter's article here, um, which uh, I think is really good. It says, it says the boy, this is Peter, Peter Ross, the boy at the front, the one with the sticky up hair, is called Charlie. He supports Celtic, as does the photographer. Charlie has an interesting face, tough but vulnerable, with something in his eyes that suggests he has seen things in his 13 years that no one of that age should witness. When the boy's gaze is snagged suddenly, by something to his right, the photographer knows that this is the moment and takes the picture. Click. That's Peter Ross there. A really good piece that's worth looking up. Um, Mackenzie, though, was doing much the same thing at the same time. And, you know, this great picture of, you know, kids in the Hawk Hill area of, of Dundee here in the 60s. Now, now, my brother and I were brought up in the 1960s in a working class area of Dundee called the Hilltown. And, and we realised as we walked around the Mackenzie exhibition that these snotty nosed kids with scuffed knees playing in the street outside unsanitary tenements could, could very easily have been us because we were snotty nosed kids with scuffed, knees, with scuffed knees playing in the street outside unsanitary tenements. You know, our, our home in the Hilton had no inside toilet or bath or shower. Um, 
In fact, one of the pictures in the Mackenzie exhibition is of, of, is of that very street that we played in. Um, it's a, a picture of the foot of the hill town. Um, a, and we lived, uh, if we can get the picture up, I'm not sure if we've got that one there, guys. Um, there we are. This is the, uh, the, the foot of the hill town in Dundee. And we lived just around the corner and up that hill a wee bit. And the high rise flats you see there, in Dundee, we call them multis. If you look at the one on the right and count up the, the windows, you count seven windows up uh, of that multi-story you can just see on the corner there. That was my grand's kitchen. Um, and uh, I spent endless hours at that window in the 1960s, looking out over the city, the river, the Firth of Tay, and the sky in the Firth, watching the rain clouds rolling in from the sea. Um, and you can see that the range of building types in this picture from tenements to high rises and walk-ups. And I, this is a, it's an example of the other big theme in the work of Mackenzie and Marzaroli. And that theme is transition. Um, this is Marzaroli's picture from the slum clearances and the gorbals. And both men took it upon themselves to show Scotland moving from the steam age of the Victorian tenements to the space age of the 1960s. And they show that change in all its brutal ambition. Um, and you can see why they were attracted to it as a photographic subject, you know, the, the debris and the dust, the contrast between the old and the new, the boldness of the vision, but also the sense of displacement and convulsion in, in, in this urban change. Um, both men, I would say, had an eye, not just for faces, but also for shape and line and air and composition. And you can see that in pictures like this one by Mackenzie of uh, washing lines in a back green. You know, this isn't, and the point I'd make about this one is that it's, this isn't a documentary photograph. This isn't street photography. This is a modern a study of geometry, of line, of space. It's, it's more fine art photography than it, than it is street photography. And Mackenzie did a lot of this kind of thing. We have to remember, Mackenzie worked in the art school in Dundee and by all accounts was a very fine teacher. He, there was an academic side to him. And a lot of his photographs are explorations of texture or composition for their own sake. Um, and much more than Marzaroli, he experimented a lot in the darkroom. And, uh, and many of his pictures are experiments in tone, experiments in grain and exposure. Um, he's much more of a technician than Marzaroli. Um, but having said that, you can, you can occasionally see a graphic quality rather than a street photography quality in Marzaroli's work too. And this is a Marzaroli picture from Avi Moore. Um, and it, again, you've got that graphic quality. This is not really a picture about people. It's not a documentary photograph. It's, it's a picture about shapes and contrast and movement. It's more about photography than it is about skiing. Um, this is not really Marzaroli's thing, but he could do it. You know, art for art's sake is not his strength. Um, this is his strength. This is the, the Celtic end of Hamden at, Cup, at the, the Scottish Cup final in 1963. And, Marzaroli gives you a sense of Glasgow as a city and as a people. He was interested in people as individuals, but also en masse as a collective, as a community. And there's so many great faces in this crowd. Um, you can spend ages taking each of them in. My favourite is the guy uh, slightly to the left, you know, with his hands clasped in front of him, leaning over the wall a wee bit, um, wearing a kind of trench coat. He's just, you know, he's like, like a, it's, it's almost like a, a movie star or a pop star uh, from, from any age, it could be 1980s. And, um, you know, but the subject matter is not the individuals in the crowd, it's the crowd itself. Um, and it's also, it's all about, it's about the city. You know, this is Marzaroli's famous picture that was used by Deacon Blue as the cover for their album, Rain Town. And, you know, maybe it's the association with the music on the album that we're very familiar with, but I find this a very emotional picture. You know, it's not just a picture of an urban landscape. There's something more going on here. There's a kind of 
an emotional investment in Glasgow as a place. And I certainly get a sense that Marzaroli's uh, subject was Glasgow people in place. You know, it was the, it was the city and the people taken, uh, uh, taken together. It was the city and its inhabitants taken as a whole, a huge subject really, you know, containing multitudes. And when you stand back and look at his work, um, especially the selection on show at street level um, at the moment. Um, if you look at it in its entirety, you get a sense of how ambition, how, of his ambition, of how ambitious that mission was, and also how equal he was to that challenge. Um, Marzaroli, to me, he was first and foremost a student of human nature. You know, his empathy is plain in every frame. He was artful too, of course, but artfulness was not his purpose. Instead, his pictures seem to come from a place of love. It's the only way I can put it. You know, Mackenzie's work is, is slightly different. He's, he is also capable of a deep humanity, but the difference is there's an intent in Mackenzie's work. There's a social and political purpose. It's more focused, if you like. And I'm thinking here about Mackenzie's book of photographs of Gorbo's children in 1965. It feels like an argument for social change. And Mackenzie's work is mo he's more of a photojournalist as well than Marzaroli. And his work in Northern Ireland in 1970, it's, it's I, you know, I, 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 I recommend that you go look that up. It's, uh, it's photojournalism of the first order. So there's generally more distance between Mackenzie and his subjects than you find with Marzaroli. And this is true, even when a picture is as engaging as this one. Um, this, is, this is my favorite Mackenzie image from the, the Hawk Hill area of, of Dundee in the, in the 1960s. Um, it's, it's an irresistible picture, really. I, I defy you not to smile, you know. And for, for me, it's, the, it's the, the thing that makes it, it's the equanimity of the kid. That's what gets me. It's like, you know, like being toughed out of your pram is just another of life's troubles and there'll be plenty more of them in the future. Um, but even in this picture, I get the feeling that the appeal for Mackenzie wasn't just the kid. The photograph for him was as much about the tangle of metal and the overturned pram and the shapes it makes and the angles and the way it frames the child. Um, I think he always had an eye for, there was always, the technician in him was always on duty and on guard for this kind of opportunity. And I think, I suspect, I, I, I have no way of knowing. I've never met the man, never met either of these photographers. I'm only a kind of, you know, a fan, with a, a fan uh, looking at them from a, from a distance. But I suspect that the reason this photograph appealed to Mackenzie was the fact that it had all those classic compositional elements, as well as that emotional punch of the child. So, so I think, you know, the, the similarities between Mackenzie and Marzaroli, they're obvious, but how do I sum up the differences? I think there's, there's a romantic sensibility in Marzaroli that you don't get as much with Mackenzie, a kind of deep love of his subjects and a deep love of his city. But with Mackenzie, there's a, a seriousness, an intent that I don't see as much in Marzaroli. Um, Having said that, if I had to choose between the two, I and you know, as as, as Malcolm mentioned at the beginning, that's an invidious question, an invidious choice, and why why should we have to choose? But if I had to choose, as a rhetorical question, I would I would pick Marzaroli. Why? Because he makes more of a connection, both with his subjects and his viewers. It's an emotional correct connection, and you know, E.M. Forster had a two word instruction for life and for art. He said, uh, only connect, only connect. And Oscar Marzaroli does exactly that. Uh, and with that, uh, um, thanks, thank you for your time and I hand you back to Malcolm. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Kenny. That was fascinating. 
Great, nice and concise, lots within it, wonderful selection of images. Uh, for me, I haven't seen uh, the Mackenzie exhibition yet because of the because of the lockdown situation, and I'm very much uh, looking forward to, to seeing it. I've seen some of the works in the collection at the McManus, which uh, one of the curators, Anna Robertson, had shown me some years ago when myself and Ben from Stills went through to see it. At that point, we said we must go and visit uh, Joe McKenzie, but we never quite got around to it, unfortunately. But um, great work, great work, both of them, of course, and uh, it's kind of work that needs to be shared much more internationally, I think. You know, we all know it and recognise it within Scotland itself, but outside, not so much so. So we need to do, we all need to do a bit of work on that, in actual fact. You showed the, um, the uh, Castle Milk lads there, and all of them, apart from... Uh, Charlie have actually been in to see the exhibition. Charlie's sister came in, so it's just it's just wonderful for people to to reconnect uh, with the images and also the the Celtic the expectation image the Celtic end. There's been quite a few people who are in that photograph who've come in and we've managed to capture them as kind of visitors of the day. One of the other people who's in that image is uh, is the father of. Um, Willie Malley and uh, his father fought in the Spanish Civil War and Willie's actually co-written a book uh, about his father in actual fact. So, you know, everything connects to some degree, doesn't it? But um, what I found really interesting, when we reopened uh, after the first lockdown, there was many more uh, younger people coming, uh, coming in to see the exhibition. And it's just fascinating to see how younger people, and talking about by younger, I mean in 20s and, and you know, mid 20s and earlier, how they're connecting, how they're being emotionally moved by these images that were of a different time and sometimes a different place. I think that's really important, Malcolm. It's like, you know, that the, this isn't, I think for, for there are, there's a certain generation for whom these pictures are nostalgia. And that's one of their primary functions. It's kind of, oh, I, I, I mind when that was there, or do you mind when so and so, or that's how we dressed, or do you mind, yeah. you know, that was in the yeah. window of the shops, or everything else. Yeah. But for a younger generation, and I, you know, I, I have a, a son who lives in the south side of Glasgow. He's from Edinburgh, but you know, the the um, uh, um, for his generation in his twenties, this is an attempt to understand the place that they now call home. You know, so it's an attempt to, to understand what is Glasgow and appreciate who the Glaswegians are. And it's um, so it's, it's, a, it's a sense to kind of, you know, there's a lot of people in Glasgow increasingly are not from Glasgow. Um, some of them are not from Scotland, some of them are not from the UK. You know, there's, there's a lot of incomers. And that's, that's a, a, a fantastic and vibrant thing. And the exhibition like yours is in a way to help them connect with the city that they now call home. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, for those uh, of the place, there's there's kind of, and it, I guess it's relevant for people from other places and countries as well, how photography acts as a kind of folk or oral, oral history function to it, you know, it's the cultural and social history aspect that, that is always fascinating in that respect. I'm just going to pick up on a couple of comments and questions here, Kenny, uh, if that's okay. One here from... Uh, Morag Ramsey, who says Joseph Mackenzie is often called the father of modern Scottish photography. What similar or other type of epitaph would you give Marzaroli? I think the, the, the whole, the whole, the whole um, father of Scottish photography thing, I think that's largely because of Mackenzie's role as a teacher. You know, and by all accounts, he was, he was a fantastic teacher, made great connections with his students. In fact, his students were his subjects. He, he, he took a lot of photographs of, of, the, of, the, of the students, um, a, you know, in, 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 it was the Duncan of Jordanson Art College at that time, was yeah. at Dundee, right. Dundee University. And, you know, I, and I think that it's, it's, it's the academic side to him and the, the mentor that he was to a whole generation um, that, um, uh, that, that gives him the, the, the means he deserves that title. And the sad thing is, you know what, we, 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 I had, didn't mention the talk, but 
Mars Rowley died a very young man. He died of a heart attack. You know, was I, I can't remember how old he was. Was he still in his forties? You know, so uh, he, he was he was in his fifties, uh, Kenny. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. was still yeah. young. You know, and it's like you know, so you know, um, Mackenzie had 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 the time to develop his legacy and um, his work and everything else. And Mars Rowley never had that opportunity. And uh, and and you know, who knows. The role that he could have played in the pictures he could have taken if he'd had if he'd had a longer time with us, um, but I think you know the, the the whole thing about the father of Scottish photography. I think that's that is justified. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oscar uh, died of a other. I think it was cancer in actual fact, but uh, was right? it, 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 it was an ending anyway, and far too young, far too young. But it was interesting what you were saying about Mackenzie being more of a more of an artist in his approach and yes he was teacher one of the earliest teachers of photography at Duncan E. Jordanston taught people like Callum Colvin uh, other artists such as uh, Pete Horobin quite quite influential in many people uh, Peter Degnan uh, says uh, Kenny in your professional capacity have you seen any photographers working today <laughs> that could be the Barzaroli and Mackenzie of tomorrow well do you know I I've seen many, you know, because you know, I I I um I was a, a newspaper editor for quite a few years, and um and I what and as a as a journalist all throughout my career, I've worked with worked with photographers on jobs and what have you. And Scotland is blessed with some of the finest press photographers in the world, you know. And and uh, that may sound like an overstatement, but it's it's not. The guys and gals, you know, working day in and day out on the streets of Scotland, you know, right now are as good as, in some cases, better than any photographers anywhere in the world. Um, and I do think, you know, that sometimes, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the photography world, um, I think maybe could do more, I, in my view, if you pardon me, Malcolm, to, to kind of, you know, um, to recognize the work of press photographers. I think there's something, there's an artificial distinction sometimes between art photography um, and press photography, um, a, but there are there are some. You know, I, I mentioned Peter Ross earlier in, in 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 that talk. There's a photographer in Glasgow called Robert Perry, who often partners um, Peter on his uh, on his journalistic projects. And um, and Rob is uh, is one of the finest photographers I've ever seen. You know, and I've worked with him, and I've seen the way he 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 deals with people. Um, and the, also, you, you, you mentioned earlier, Document Scotland, um, the photographers there, people like uh, Jeremy Sutton Hibbert, are, are, are world-class um, documentary photographers. Um, so, you know, the, 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 there are, the answer to the question is yes, <laughs> an, 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 an unapologetic yes. There are um, people working who are equal to them. Yeah, and here's a comment uh, or a question from from uh, one of uh, Glasgow's current uh, street photographers, makes very interesting work, uh, Donnie McLean. Do you feel it was easier to be a street photographer from that era than it is today? Any observations on that? Um, possibly, possibly, because um, and I think one of the differences is uh, it's quite hard. I mean, some of the some of the, some of the, the, the best of the, those those pictures I've just shown um, earlier on are pictures of children. Um, and I think it's now quite difficult to take pictures of children in the street. You know, you get accused of being this, that, and the other, and you can get chased. I think there's a questioning of your motives, shall we say, when you're taking pictures of children. Um, in a street photography context, um, so that is hard, and um, a, and you know, obviously, the, if, a, it's actually very rare to find photographs of children in in newspapers. And um, you know, the 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 there's there's a code of conduct for um, newspaper editors through um, the regulatory bodies like IPSO, um, which are very strict on the terms under which you can take a photograph of a child and put it in a newspaper, for example. Um, so, the, you know, the, there's, the, the, there are sensitivities, quite rightly, about, about um, taking pictures of kids. Um, as for other kinds of types of street photography, it's just as easy and there's, um, I think it's, it's the challenge is there. You know, you, you, you have to watch yourself, you have to 
watch where you are and how you conduct yourself. You have to conduct yourself, I think, with a bit of dignity and afford your subjects dignity. Um, and try not to be sly. Um, I think the more direct and upfront you are, if you look like you're trying to take a picture behind somebody's back or um, you're trying to be a surreptitious about it, I think that's that's not doing you or, or, or photography any favours whatsoever. But, you know, as with anything in life, you do it with a degree of grace and a bit of humility and a wee bit of, uh, and, and as I was saying earlier, I used that word again, connect with people, then it's um, it's just as easy to do now as it was in the 1960s. Yeah, very good, very good answer. Um, you mentioned Robert Perry. Now, interestingly, uh, Robert uh, learned his, his craft uh, through Cranhill Arts in the in the northeast of Glasgow, in actual fact, uh, because we have an event on in uh, Friday night with Alistair McCallum of Cranhill. Uh, absolutely fascinating, the, the training and the projects that uh, Cranhill undertook through photography and film. So that's another connection. Um, a colleague uh, of, uh, of ours here at street level uh, takes us back to the question about young people connecting to the work. And uh, Isolt uh, Timmermans, she says that one thing I've noticed that young people visiting have been fascinated by, especially young photographers, is the physicality of the work, black and white film. It connects them to a process often they have never tried, sparks an interest in reaching back to the older technology of analog photography. So I think the work also has a really valuable role in relation to the history of the process. So that's more a that's more a, a comment there, a, a very good one, in actual fact, uh, Kenny, to, to, what, to what we do here, you know, as, a, as an organisation. Um, there are a couple of various kind of comments, but uh, I feel we're probably a bit 22 now. The McManus, ex I've posted just to remind us that the exhibition is on until the 24th of October, 2021. So everyone outside Dundee will get a chance to visit it when restrictions lift. I'd say it's an essential piece of work going to visit it, but uh, don't quote me on that <laughs> when we're in tier one. Um, Malcolm, that is, I think all glass regions in particular should go to Scotland's cultural capital of Dundee, you know, to, to sample a bit of culture. You know, I think that's a, that's a, a good thing to be doing. I, I think so too. I spent a year in Dundee, Kenny, doing my postgrad back in the late 80s. So uh, I've got a particular uh, affinity, shall we say. Um, but I think we're going to bring it to a close, um, if that's OK. Uh, other questions or comments we can maybe come back to uh, on the Facebook comments itself. So. Unless there's anything else you want to say, Kenny, we'll kind of draw it, draw it to a close, yeah? No, thanks very much for having me. Uh, it was a pleasure. And, um, a, you know, I think you guys and Stills Gallery in, Dundee, in uh, Edinburgh and um, McManus in Dundee and elsewhere are all doing fantastic work. And so uh, more power at your elbow. Yeah, very good. Well, thank you again, Kenny. And uh, just hang on. When we wave goodbye to everyone, you hang back just so we can say... Uh, cheerio to you so uh, just for everyone uh, who's watching thank you very much uh, for joining it's been been great um, I hope you enjoyed the gig and uh, no gig is quite complete without me pointing you in the direction of the merch stall which is online so John if you could share that uh, the, the, uh, the link to the shop there people can uh, can look up at what we've got in relation to the Marzaroli show. We've got fantastic calendars, book, gift packs, the lot. Uh, so shop local this Christmas. So thanks to everyone again. And thank you again, Kenny. And uh, hopefully see some of you on Friday night. Bye.